Hey everyone, thanks for your interest in Austin Pets Alive's Parvo program. My name is Nippany and I'm a former Parvo program manager and now volunteer. This video is a short introduction to the program for the Maddie's apprentices who will be visiting our facilities. So a little bit about Austin Pets Alive. APA is a nonprofit organization dedicated to stopping the killing of Austin's adoptable dogs and cats, which is accomplished by focusing on the highest risk groups at the city shelter. One group that was regularly euthanized in the city shelter was dogs with parvo. These dogs require intensive medical care and strict isolation. Uh, so many shelters often euthanize dogs who test positive rather than treating them, either because they don't have the resources to provide the necessary medical care or because they're worried about spreading the virus uh, to other dogs in the shelter. APA has solved these problems by developing a volunteer-based parvo program that's able to treat parvo at a much lower cost than in a traditional vet hospital and with a similar survival rate. Now, when a dog at the city shelter tests positive for parvo, the shelter calls APA with a deadline. An APA transport volunteer picks up the dog from the city shelter and brings it to the parvo ICU where treatment begins by our parvo team. Uh, a typical, typical dog stay in the ICU is about a week uh, though a small percentage of dogs stay 10 days or longer. Uh, while in the ICU, APA vets examine the dogs daily to determine treatments, which are then carried out by a dedicated group of highly trained volunteers who together fill two shifts a day, 365 days a year. Uh, during your apprenticeship, you'll learn how to start treating your parvo puppies with a high success rate and on a shelter budget. We do look forward to having you. Uh, the dog in the picture is actually my dog, Timber. He was treated at the Parvo ICU in 2012 and actually came from San Antonio. He was incredibly sick for several days and the doctors didn't think he'd make it. But a lot of times, uh, even the sickest dogs can pull through and just suddenly start feeling better. And now he lives a very spoiled life as a single dog child. So we never give up on these guys. The APA Parvo program is the first program of its kind in the nation to treat all Parvo positive dogs. We've developed and refined our isolation and medical protocols over the years to maximize our success and we're excited to share all of these with you. Since Parvo is an incredibly infectious and hardy virus, Parvo patients must be isolated within designated facilities throughout treatment to prevent spread of the disease. Our isolation unit is far away from foot traffic and the general population of healthy dogs. We have many protocols to keep the virus contained in our designated Parvo ICU. Our team treats between 300 and 500 dogs every year. Our patients typically come from the city shelter and owner surrenders, but also from surrounding towns and sometimes even other cities, such as Dallas. We rescue 100% of Parvo cases in the Austin area that otherwise can't afford private practice care. The graph in the slideshow shows our 2012 numbers by month, with the orange being survivors and purples being the ones that didn't survive. Our survival rates are actually between 80 to 90 percent, which is as good as what's achieved in private practice clinics. Throughout most of the year, we typically have between 5 to 15 dogs being treated in the ICU at any given time. Um, in our peak months, though, which is typically in the spring and summer, uh, we've had over 30 dogs before. Our Parvo specific team now consists of one full-time paid Parvo manager and about 20 medical and assistant Parvo volunteers. The medical clinic veterinarians assess the patients daily and the clinic technicians serve as on-call staff for intakes throughout the day. Our noteworthy resources that we've made include a comprehensive Parvo wiki, which contains all protocols and documentation to treat Parvo patients, a training curriculum to efficiently and effectively train medical volunteers, manager guidelines to run a Parvo program, and a lot more. We've come a long way since the start of our Parvo program, so don't be afraid to start out small as well. Our program essentially started as a foster program in our executive director's bathroom in 2009. Uh, while you're preparing your facilities, you can start your Parvo program in foster homes and out using outpatient care to start saving lives immediately. We didn't actually get a facility until December 2010 when we treated 19 dogs. 
The manager for the PARVA program, uh, who is responsible for recruiting, training, volunteers, scheduling, and other program improvements, was a volunteer position until 2012, when they became a part-time paid position as our resources expanded. At the beginning of 2016, we updated our medical protocols, implementing force feeding all patients, and adjusted some of our antibiotic dosages to be able to afford the best anti nausea medication, uh, Serenia, so we're always looking for ways to still improve. And then in late 2016, we celebrated treating our 3,000th patient, which was really exciting for the Parvo program. The graph shows the numbers we've treated over the years, with light blue being in Dr. Jefferson's home and the dark blue being in our ICU. While your PARVA program can start as a foster-based program, we'll definitely give you the tools to start your own facilities as soon as possible. You'll of course need a veterinarian to oversee the program, prescribe treatments, and see patients. Our veterinarian comes in once a day to assess current and new patients and is on call via phone during treatment shifts in case a patient is crashing or a volunteer has a question. You'll need a team of medical volunteers or staff for morning and evening treatments, which generally take two to three hours to complete. And you'll need a manager to do all the recruiting, training, scheduling, and program improvements. At APA, we're lucky to have our med clinic staff available throughout the day for helping with intakes. Since parvo patients must be isolated, all equipment will need to be designated for the isolation unit only. For example, don't wash your parvo laundry in your shelter's regular washer, and don't use the parvo washer for laundry for the general population. When designating or picking your facility, you'll need a toilet for flushing feces, running water, a fridge for medications and food, a washer and dryer, many electrical outlets safely above kennels for plugging in IV pumps and heating pads as needed, and a changing area to change into designated parvo scrubs and shoes. The core medications we use are Batril or Enrofloxacin, and Polyflex, which is a subcutaneous ampicillin to prevent and treat, uh, the antibiotics are to prevent and treat sepsis. You'll need Regulin and Serenia, which are used to help treat nausea, and fluids, of course, to help with dehydration. You'll also need medical supplies, such as needles, syringes, and fluid lines. Uh, when you're ready to treat more critical cases, you'll need IV pumps, IV catheters, and all the supplies uh, needed for placing catheters. IV antibiotics, uh, we use ampicillin and um, or cefazolin, and you might even want some head of starch, which is a colloid fluid. Keep in mind that until you have IV equipment, uh, dogs under 10 pounds or so and under four months of age or so may, de may need more round the clock care, um, including frequent force feedings. You'll learn more about the medications we use for our program during your apprenticeship, though. So two, ma two major lessons we've learned over the years is to vaccinate on intake and to verify that an IDEX Parvo test was done. Our former protocol for vaccinations, our former protocol was to vaccinate the patients um, once they were being discharged. In 2011, however, we were taking many parvo patients from a shelter in a nearby city. Their shelter wasn't actually vaccinating their dogs and had a distemper outbreak, which they ended up spreading to some of our Austin parvo patients. Now we generally vaccinate all patients on intake to give them some protection. In the past, we've also had some shelters tell us that they have a parvo positive patient, but they're actually basing their diagnosis on clinical signs of just vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, without having actually run a test. There are other, disease, other diseases though, such as intestinal parasite overload, which can present similarly to parvo, and we don't want to expose those patients in the parvo ICU. Always make sure that a test has been run uh, to verify parvo before putting them in a parvo isolation unit. Thanks for watching this presentation, and we look forward to having you for a parvo program apprenticeship.